Water covers 71% of the Earth's surface, yet only 1% of all water on Earth is actually usable by humans and many other living things. Did you know you can live up to 30 to 40 days without food, but you can only last around three days without water? In this lesson, we want to be able to recap the types of bonding you looked at during Key Stage 4 Chemistry and use this to understand the structure of water and its properties. We will also relate these properties to their importance to life. Please remember to like, subscribe and post any questions in the comments box below. In today's lesson, we want to understand the importance of water as a solvent in transport, including its dipole nature. As a starter, what is a covalent bond? How does a covalent bond differ from an ionic bond? Explain the importance of ions in living things. You can pause the video while you think. For question one, a covalent bond involves the sharing of electrons and forms between non-metal elements. For question two, in ionic bonding, electrons are not shared but are transferred. This causes atoms to gain charges. The charged atoms are held in an electrostatic attraction. These bonds are formed between metals and non-metals. For question three, two examples you would have studied at key stage four are, firstly, nitrate ions, which are used in plants to make DNA and amino acids. And secondly, you would have learned about magnesium ions, which are used to make chlorophyll in plants. <laughs> During Key Stage 4 Chemistry, you would have learned a lot about ionic and covalent bonding, which we'll briefly go over before looking at the structure of water. During ionic bonding, we see a transfer of electrons. In this example, sodium chloride, the sodium donates one electron to chlorine, which completes its outer shell. In this example, which element would become an anion and which would become a cation? Sodium loses an electron, becoming positively charged, we call it a cation. Chlorine gains an electron, becoming negatively charged, we call it an anion. Ions can separate in water in a process called dissociation, which we'll look at later. They also play an important role in living organisms. Here's a list of different anions and cations and their roles in organisms. During your A-level studies, you will cover all of them. In covalent bonding, electrons are shared. These molecules don't have an overall charge, however, sometimes these molecules can become polarized. Polar molecules have a separation of charge called a dipole. Here are some examples of polar molecules. Here are some examples of nonpolar molecules. Why is water so important? Around 60 to 70% of our body is made from it. It helps regulate temperature in living organisms. Many organisms rely on it as a habitat and chemical reactions of life take place in it. In order to understand why water is so important to life, we first need to look at its structure. A water molecule consists of one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms, giving the molecular formula H2O. The bonds that hold the oxygen and the hydrogen are examples of covalent bonds. Although the electrons in the molecule are shared, they are shared unequally, creating an unequal distribution of charge. The oxygen atom has more protons in its nucleus, so it attracts the shared electrons in the covalent bond more strongly than the hydrogen atom does. We represent the difference in charge across the atom using the term delta positive and delta negative. The hydrogens have a delta positive charge because it is less electron negative losing charge by the electrons in the covalent bond being more attractive to the oxygen atom, which would be more electron negative and given the delta negative sign. Electron negativity is a measure of the tendency of an atom to attract a bonding pair of electrons. This electron negativity forms a dipole molecule, which as we mentioned at the start, is an unequal distribution of charge. In an exam, if you are asked to label the charges on a water molecule, you must make sure you put the delta positive sign next to both hydrogens and not just one. Because water is a dipole, it is able to stick with other water molecules through an electrostatic attraction called a hydrogen bond. The ability of water to do this gives rise to a variety of essential properties significant for life. <laughs> 
Now that you understand the structure of water, we can look at the properties of water and the significance of these properties for life. There are 10 important properties of water and we'll go through all of the ones that are displayed here. The first one, water has a high specific heat capacity, actually one of the highest of any known substances. We define this as the heat needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. Water must therefore absorb large amounts of heat energy before the temperature temperature raises a significant amount. Conditions are therefore stable in cells and aquatic environments as the temperature doesn't change much. Water has a high latent heat of vaporization. Latent heat is defined as the heat or energy that is absorbed or released during a phase change of a substance. Latent heat of vaporization is the energy needed to cause a substance to evaporate. A high latent heat of vaporization means evaporation during sweating or transpiration causes cooling. We can understand latent heat of vaporization better by looking at this diagram. In this diagram, if we zoomed into the water molecules, we can see that it's held together by a hydrogen bond. These hydrogen bonds need to absorb large amounts of energy before they can break and turn water into its gas form. When water does eventually evaporate, it takes with it this heat energy causing the cooling effect we talked about earlier. Water is also a liquid at room temperature. Due to the hydrogen bonding between the water molecules, a lot of energy is needed to cause it to change state. This provides a liquid medium for living organisms and for the chemistry of life. What we mean here is for molecules such as carbohydrates, nucleic acids, proteins and lipids. For many liquids, they reach their maximum density at their freezing point. However, as water changes state from a liquid to a solid, its density does initially increase, but it will reach its maximum density at 4 degrees Celsius, making it unusual as this temperature is above its freezing temperature at 0 degrees Celsius. Past 4 degrees Celsius, density doesn't actually continue to increase, but will start decreasing. Let's look at why. As the temperature falls, this reduces the kinetic energy, so more hydrogen bonds are formed between the water molecules. The formation of these hydrogen bonds prevents water from packing closely together, resulting in a rigid structure with spaces between the molecules. The significance for living organisms is ice forms on the surface of water. This insulates the water below, allowing life to survive below ice. Water molecules show a strong attraction to one another. This is called cohesion. The significance for living organisms is that water can be pulled through plants in a columns as the water molecules are held together by hydrogen bonds. The cohesive nature of water also means it has a high surface tension. At the surface of water, the hydrogen bonds in the water molecules orientate inwards. So water molecules are pulled together. The surface of the water will therefore behave like an elastic sheet. This allows water to form droplets on surfaces and run off. It also allows certain organisms to land and move on the water surface. Water molecules are also adhesive. They are attracted to other molecules. This is important in plants as water is able to stick to the walls of the xylem, helping it move up the plant. Water has a low viscosity. Despite its cohesive nature, water molecules are therefore able to slide over one another very, very easily. The significance for living organisms is that water is able to move through narrow capillaries. Water is also a good solvent. It is able to dissolve many substances. Because water is a dipole, it can form electrostatic interactions with other polar molecules or ions. It does this by forming hydration shells. Hydration shells allow particles to be dispersed or spread out evenly in water. In this example, when salt is placed in water, the ions separate in a process called dissociation. You can see the hydration shells being formed, helping salt dissolve in water. Non-polar molecules like fats and oils don't interact with water or form hydration shells. The significance for living organisms is water provides a medium for chemical reactions. The final property of water is that it has a high transmission to visible light. This is because water is colourless, it makes it transparent to light. In plants, sunlight can reach cells and pass through them so that photosynthesis may occur. Take a look at this progress question. Match the property with the correct significance for life. You can pause the video while you think. These are all the correct answers. If you got any incorrect, you may need to rewatch the video again.
Let's take a look at some further progress questions. What is a polar molecule? Water is attracted to other water molecules. What property of water is being referred to? Name the bond which holds adjacent water molecules together. And water has a higher specific heat capacity. What does this mean? You can pause the video while you think. For question one, an uneven distribution of charge causes one end of the molecule to have a positive charge and the other end a negative charge. For question two, cohesion. For question three, hydrogen bond. For question four, a relatively large amount of energy is needed to raise the temperature of water. At the end of the lesson, you should now be able to understand the importance of water as a solvent in transport, including its dipole nature. In our next lesson, we will look at the structure of carbohydrates. Please remember to like, subscribe and post any questions in the comments box below.